Hey guys, what's up? It's Vince. I got a great podcast for you guys today. It's called The Four Money Buckets. Um, but the, the story that kind of I'll, I'll lead into is, is somewhat of an interesting but morbid uh, story. When my dad passed, we had to send uh, clothes to the funeral home. And we sent shirts and we sent pants and we sent a pair of shoes. And the uh, funeral home people call. And it's funny because the funeral home people were clients at, at GFP, so I knew them personally. And they called, they called my mom. like, um, we have a little problem here. And my mom was like, wow, what's going on? And she's like, oh, one of the shoes that you sent us had uh, $10,000 cash stuffed inside the shoe. And my mom was like surprised. She had no idea. She just picked a pair of shoes. And my dad had not worn those shoes in five years because he had, you know, the stroke and he was in the wheelchair and stuff. So it, it was like, these are like dress shoes. So he hadn't worn any dress shoes. And, um, <laughs> and so like, uh, obviously we go, uh, you know, pick up the cash. Um, but I'm guessing that was like an emergency farm that my dad had put away, uh, for a while and it was just sitting there, um, forever. He would have been pissed about that and not collecting interest as a finance guy. Um, but, but, but anyway, so, so think about that and think about how that feels when you, you know, find the money in a pocket when you all of a sudden you put on a, a jacket or a pair of shoes, a pair of pants and you hadn't worn them in a while and all of a sudden you just kind of find money. Well, it's a really, it's a really cool feeling. Now imagine if you could manufacture that, right? Imagine that you could manufacture um, this found money um, this found money situation, right? Where you surprisingly find a pair of pants, put it on, and you get money. Um, well, today I'm going to talk to you about how you can do that with the four money buckets. And after following uh, Kennedy for a long time, you know, one of the things he talks about is the most valuable thing that you own is your list. The most valuable thing you own is your list, is your customer list. Um, and I'm going to talk about the different lists, and those are each list is uh, is a money bucket. But a lot of people do not value this. A lot of people look at an email list or a phone number list as just a thing. Some people don't even have it at all. I go absolutely bonkers when I email a gym owner tells me they don't have an email list, or they don't collect phone numbers, or they don't have it in some place. It's literally like just taking something that could be your most valuable asset and not using it. And so today I wanted to really just shine the light on how important these lists that you own and all, all the lists that if you have an existing business, all the lists that I'm going to talk about today, um, you, you have them, you, you, you have them all. And so let me go over the first one and I'm not going to go over exactly how to, to leverage it. Uh, it's something I went through. And again, this is fresh in my mind because I went through this, these, I go through these lists and what to do with these lists in detail in the, in the six week search program, which actually we had module two yesterday as I record this. Um, but so, so list number one is your list of unconverted leads, right? And if you're doing any kind of marketing, let's say, let's say you're running Facebook ads or you've gone to a community event or you've had a seminar or you've had just people call, you know, your jammy, you collected their information. Those are all leads, right? Now, not everyone, I'm guessing, not everyone became customers, right? Not everyone became customers. So you probably have a list of those people somewhere that have raised their hand and shown interest to, to, to do something with you, to buy your training, to, to do something. And they never came in the door, right? They never came in the door. And, you know, the story I always tell is the story of, um, the, um, the tire guy. And I went to, um, I went to the gas station, and dropped Vanessa off to get her oil changed. And the tire goes, Hey buddy, your tires are flat. Or do you know your tires are worn down? You need new tires. And I was like, all right, cool. Send me an estimate. And he calls you know, me up and says, hey, this is Gary from NP Fuel. I got your estimate here. 
And uh, he's like, call me back. And I was like, no, I mean, call him back because I'm busy and I fly around and whatever. And I see him a month later and I said, hey, Gary, you still got that estimate for the tires? And he's like, he looked at me and he growled. And he's like, no, nah, I don't got that estimate. I'm like, okay. And he's like, you people, you people ask me for these estimates and I spend time thinking about what I need to send charger and all that. And I send it to you and I call you and you don't even call me back. So I threw it in the garbage. I was like, oh my God. I was like, this is the worst business in the world. I was like, this guy just literally threw money in the garbage. It's an estimate. So I was into, I, I needed tires. And what he, what he should have done is kept following up with me. But here's the thing. I hopefully in his business, and I know it's not in his business, but I was an unconverted lead, right? I was someone that needed something, desperately needed to buy tires. And he sent me the estimate and I just ghosted him, just like people ghost you all the time. Now, that does not mean I don't need tires, right? That means I, 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 need, I need tires. But the reality is, if there's never any kind of a follow-up again, the chances of Gary getting me, you know, to get tires from him are probably small, right? Because maybe the next time I go to get gas at a different station, I might just, the guy might give me a better pitch and I might go and get tires from him. But the reality is you got to understand that you have a money bucket and that money bucket is the list of all the people that reached out and didn't pay you money, but they're still walking around without personal training. They're still walking around heavy. They're still walking around with low energy. They're still walking around knowing they need it and they just need something to get them started. And that's a money bucket for you. There's people on that list that they're going to appreciate you reaching out to them. And a lot of times the people don't do this. And here's one of the reasons why people don't do this. People don't do this because they feel like they're bothering people. Now, think about Gary from the Tire Guides. If he reached out to me and he said, hey, Vince, you know, I sent you a, a, an estimate of the tires a couple months ago. And I just, you know, I know you're, you're driving around. I saw that car seat in the back of your car. And. I know you got kids and, you know, you want to be, you know, safe. You want to make sure those kids are staying safe and you're, you're, you're driving around with ball tires and you got to get those things fixed. So, you know, I got the essence for you. Come on down. We'll schedule an appointment and get those tires fixed. And it's just like now he put it in a position where it's like, oh, okay, yeah, now he made it a little bit more important for me, you know, to get tires, um, right? Because So people in the gym space, they're the same thing. They're walking around, you know, not, not living life like as good as they could be. Right, their life is better when they train with you. Their life is they have more energy when they train with you. They feel more confident when they train with you. Right, everything is better when they train with you. But they may just need that little nut. So that is bucket number one: is all the people that inquired about doing something with you. They didn't tell you to go to hell. Now, if they told you to go to hell, maybe they're not, you know, for you. Right, and you probably don't want them anyway. Someone that's not that much of a jerk. Right. Um, because you're, you're you're a good business, right? You're not a you're, you're not selling snake oil. You're just trying to help people get fit and get healthy. So if they treat you poorly, then take them off your list and write them off. And right, so that's, that's bucket number one is is all of the unconverted leads. And if you want to make money from this list, you got to have the list. You got to have a way to organize it and then be able to reach out to these people. So that's list number one. No, list number two is is the people that tried something with you, but didn't buy. Now, my my definition of trying is they came in for, they came into your physical plant, or even maybe they even had um, a, a, like a consultation phone call or something like that, um, or they did a trial membership. A lot of times people in my world, they sell trial memberships where it's like 30 days um, for like a hundred bucks or whatever, right? And so, so I call them unconverted trials. That, that's the bucket I put them in. Um, they tried it and they didn't buy. Now, the story I have for this is my wife, Vanessa, she, um, she and I used to work together at a gym called Fitness Quest that my uh, friend Dirk owns. And we worked together and I was obsessed with Vanessa. The first day I saw Vanessa, I was like, that's the most beautiful woman in the world. It was like amazing. I was like, Gaga, you know, uh, over her. Um, and I would look at her calendar and I would, you know, her initials were VC back then. And I would look, they, they used to put your, your schedules in the calendar by your initials. And so I would look and see when VC was working. 
And I would always make sure that I was in the building when VC was in the building because I always wanted to be around her. Um, she just had an unbelievable energy and smile, and she was just a fun, cool person um, to be around, as she still is today. Um, so I was, I always wanted to, to ask Vanessa out. I never had the courage and I finally had the courage to ask her out. And I said, we were walking out, um, together to go home is in the evening. I said, Hey, do you want to go grab some sushi or something? And she looked at me and she just said, no, she's like, you just can't like randomly ask me that. Like, you know, even if you ask me ahead of time, plan something like that. And I was like, all right. She said, no. And I asked her again, like three weeks later and she said, no, again, I'm like, oh man, this sucks. Um, and it wasn't like asking her like on a date. I was just really just asking her as a friend, you know, to go out. She still kept, you know, ditching me. And then I asked her uh, a third time. I was like, hey, um, do you uh, do you want to go uh, to a Tom Petty concert? Do you want to go to a Tom Petty concert? And she responded with, who's Tom Petty? And I was like, oh, God. This is bad. And she finally ended up coming to the Tom Petty concert with me. And then we started dating after that. And we got married. Right. And so, um, but that's the thing. So I got like rejected, right? She, she just, she rejected me several times. And so someone that does a trial membership at your gym, they're rejecting you. They're saying they tried your stuff and it wasn't good enough and they didn't sign up. That's essentially what they're saying. Now, if you take that as, you know, hey, they're never going to come back, then that's how you take it. But if you did take it like that, you're really just saying that um, they wrote you off and that what their experience was so bad that they'll never come back. And that's not the case in most places. Right? Most of the time people don't sign up. Maybe it's a financial reason, um, but circumstances change, right? Um, and we've had a lot of people that have done a trial membership, but that is, think about it, they've already paid you. And they've already tried your stuff. And if they left on good terms, which you should always, if someone doesn't sign up, leave it on good terms. That's a really important thing. Um, you know, leave it on good terms. And if anything, um, it's an opportunity to get a referral. Right? Because a lot of times people will be like, yeah, I just, I really liked it. And I just, you know, I want to do it, but I just, I can't afford it right now and, and stuff like that. And those are people you can ask for referrals. So remember, just because they tried it and didn't sign up doesn't mean they won't come back again. We've had many, many, many people come back that signed up for a trial membership that tried the gym and did not. So that's your second money bucket. And they are almost a little warmer than the leads because they know you, right? They spend time with you already. Um, the third money bucket, the third money bucket is, and hopefully you have those people on the list. And the third money bucket is the people that used to pay you. The people that used to pay you. When we, when the pandemic hit, right? They, it, and when I say used to pay you, that means like, you know, there's some kind of a, uh, of a trial. Uh, sorry, sorry, kind of a membership, like a full membership. Right? And um, when we, uh, the, when, when the pandemic hit, obviously we got, our business got hit hard like everybody else's. And we're running our business and we're doing the stupid Zoom stuff. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, we were able, we got the grant in uh, to work out in uh, permission to work out outside. And so I think it was a like July. And so what we did is we went through our list of all the people that used to pay. So we went through Mind Body. We had never done this before. And we went through the list of phone numbers of people that paid us. And we were like, hey, man, this is pandemic time. This is, the, we do what we need to do to succeed here, right? And I don't care if we spammed a couple people and a couple people responded and like, screw you, take me off my list. And that's, I was fine with that. And so what we did was we looked at every person in MindBody, this was our CRM, every person in MindBody that had paid us a, 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 any kind of money, right? Any kind of money. And what we did is we sent them a text message. And we actually didn't send text. We did a, what's called a voicemail job. We did this through our software called Nurture Ninja. And we sent them a voicemail job. And then the voicemail went to uh, a text message. So we used the phone. So we didn't even use a list of emails for this one. We actually used uh, a list of phone numbers. And so that's what we did. And we did the text bomb. And we did the voice, We did the text uh, message. And then we had our Leo sales guy follow up with these people. But we just put this met we ended up generating that month alone thirty thousand dollars in new sales just from 
was sending messages to this list of people that used to pay us money. It was one of the most successful things we ever done. Yeah, there were some people that were pissed off because there were people that paid us like 10 years ago. That's like, why the hell? Because they had unsubscribed from our list and that we, but we still had their phone number. So, but, but here's the thing, you know, at, but, and I'm not saying you need to go and do this, but I'm just saying that that was a money bucket that we didn't have $30,000 at the start of the month. And then by the end of the month, and I'm talking about $30,000 on the spot, not, not lifetime value bullshit. That, that thing, like literally we generated an extra $30,000 in the month of July, just from what people bought from this message campaign. But the money was in the list. The money was in going into mind body, exporting the list of phone numbers of all the people that used to pay us at some point that weren't paying us now. And we did something and said some kind of a message and did, did something for them. And so that's money bucket number three is the people that used to pay you money, your former members, most likely, just like the people that are unconverted jumpstart, they probably didn't leave kicking and screaming saying you suck and we're not ever going to come back and everything like that. They probably just left, um, you know, um, because life got in the way. That's why I, I think that's why people leave. People leave your gym most likely because life got in the way. Right. Maybe they got a new job. Maybe their schedule changed. I and mean, we had someone emails yesterday to cancel their membership. They wanted to cancel the membership because their job changed and they needed to be in the city. And they're like, do you have five minute sessions? They're like, no, we don't have five minute sessions. They're like, if you don't have five minute sessions, there's no other times I can come. And I'm like, sorry. So we, you know, they terminated. But, and, you know, the, but the reality is that person wasn't unhappy. They were just, you know, their life circumstances changed. And they weren't able um, to come in anymore, right? And I'm not bringing my trainers in, you know, at at five a.m. when they're working, you know, their butts off already. So uh, it was we were fine to part ways, but you know, at some point their circumstances will change again, and they'll be back. See, that's you got to assume that you got to assume that most of the people that left you um, were were people that um, were, are people that will come back. So that's the third money bucket. Um, and the fourth money bucket are the people that are already paying you. The fourth money bucket are people that are already paying you. Now, I've sent, I, I, I think I've done a couple podcasts on, on this, but um, the, our director of, of uh, GRIT, the GRIT program that I run, it's, it's really, the GRIT thing is really funny. Um, so about a year ago, we, we, Gabriel Fitness was always, it's called Gabriel Fitness and Performance, right? That was my gym name. And we always did athletes and adults, right? And when the pandemic hit, we shut down our athlete program because we couldn't get any athletes to do Zoom. So we just screw this. We're not even going to mess with it. So we just shut it down. And I was like, I didn't even know if I was going to bring it back. And I ended up getting the itch. I honestly have like this huge passion. I think it's like because that's how I started as a sports performance guy. I have this huge passion for sports. Like I listened to a great cook movement podcast over the while well, doing my ruck on Sunday. And I was like, oh, I'm fired. I'm texting my director of sports performance all day. And I'm like, dude, this, we got to do this. We got to do that. And it's just like, I have like three other businesses that, you know, are, are, are a lot bigger than my sports performance business. But um, I'm like, I'm finding spending all my, because it's like something I love and I'm passionate about. I'm, I'm to, be honest with you, to be honest with you, my niece and nephew and my, my kids are all in the program. So I want the program to be great for them as well as all the other kids in the community and stuff. So anyway. So we, 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 we created this grit program, which is a, it's obviously my business, but we branded it totally separate and it doesn't say Gabriel fitness anywhere on the ads. And we've been advertising in a newspaper and my uncle, I was over my uh, niece's house, uh, my, my uh, sister's house last night for a party. And my uncle, who's like a big paper reader, he reads the newspaper and we market in the newspaper and they start talking about grit. And he looks at me and said, wait, grit. He's like, I've been seeing those ads in the papers. Like, that's you? And I'm like, yeah, that's me. He was like, oh my God, I didn't even, I had no idea that that was you. It's like, so I, I, I and that's the, the whole beauty of it. I wanted a separate brand that was a standalone brand from Gabriel Fitness. I wanted people to know that it was powered by Gabriel Fitness, right, from an internal perspective. But I wanted it to be almost like this new thing that came into town. So anyway, that was just, it was, it was a funny story last night. He was like, oh, that's you. Um, so, when when grit hit, so we rebranded and grit has exploded this year. 
Mike, uh, the director, came to me and says, hey, we want to uh, do some up upgrades to equipment. We need some new equipment. We want to get some jump ropes. We want to get some kettlebells. We want to paint the facility, put the logo up, and we want to invest in some things like uh, giving kids shock and all boxes when they sign up for the gym. So I was like, okay, cool. This is going to cost a good chunk of money. I think it was close to like eight grand. And uh, I said, well, hey, man, I ain't paying for that in my pocket. And he was like, well, I don't got eight grand. And I was like, well, how are we going to get eight grand? And I was like, well, how many kids do you have signed up in the winter program? He's like, 112. I was like, okay, you already got 112 people paying you. Um, what else could we sell those 112 people that could make us this eight grand? And he says, uh, I don't know. Let's, uh, and I was like, well, how about a speed camp? Um, and he's like, okay, cool. I was like, do sell a speed camp. And the goal was to sell uh, 24 kids uh, into a speed camp, two groups of 12. Uh, we would charge 40 bucks a session um, per kid. So I think we ended up getting, I don't know, it was around eight grand that we made. Right? And it's only in two hours a week, right? We two, it's only once a week for two sessions for 10 weeks. Um, and so it's a, it's a, it's a profitable venture, but it is, it's giving them a value. I was watching the session um, over the weekend and they were doing a great job. Mike does a great job of teaching speed, but the reality was the money came from people that were already paying us. We didn't have to go out and run ads. We didn't have to go out and get new customers. We already had 112 people paying us. And all we did was reach out to those 112 people and say, hey, do you want to add this to your membership? And then we got the $8,000 that we needed to buy the equipment and the paint. And we used, so that's a money bucket number four. Money bucket number four is the people that are already paying you. And you're thinking, well, I don't want to exhaust my list. They're already paying me and stuff like that. But here's the here's the reality. One, they don't have to buy it. Right? Not everyone bought it. Most people on that list of 112 people didn't buy it. And that's fine. And most most people won't. But if you look at the law of averages, some people are going to buy it. A certain percentage of people will buy it. So that is the money bucket number four. Money bucket number four is the people that are already paying you money and what else can you sell them? So hopefully that was helpful. And you now have a new appreciation for these lists. I want you to almost look at, you know, almost like think about it, right? So I talked about the list and like the list of unconverted leads and the list of um, trial members and the list of former members and the list of current members, right? And I want you to print them out and put them on the table. And I want you to envision them as money. That those lists are a gateway to make money. And I think that if, I, if there's anything I want to push into the minds of my gym owners is that they must value the list. So not only do they want to make sure that the relationship with the list is strong, which is a very, very important thing. Um, but that the list is growing and there's certain things that are happening to grow the list, right? Um, now, your former client list is going to grow organically just from losing clients. And there's a chance that some of them will never become members, right? Um, because they move away or, but hell, maybe if you have virtual stuff, um, you can get them into that. But um, so hopefully that was helpful and that you have some kind of um, a grasp of this concept of you have these things. You have this $10,000 cash in your shoe right now. Everything that I talked about today exists for you if you own a gym. But now it's just a matter of how creatively you are actually leveraging and using these into executing um, a, a growth plan uh, for your business. So hopefully this was helpful. I have uh, something for you guys today. I, I was looking through, and I, and I can't imagine why you wouldn't do this, um, but I was looking through all of the master classes that I've done. And what we do is we have this Excel spreadsheet that essentially Work is, is is a list of everything I've ever done in the last five six years as a consultant, and when I say everything, it's like everything, and it's on this master 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 Excel spreadsheet. And one of the tabs I was looking at was all of the master classes that I've done in my program called the MMIC, which is the Marketing Masters Insiders Club, 
And what that is, is it's a program for gym owners. It's an entry level program for gym owners, right? It's, it's a way to get started with me where you can get business building and money making advice um, on a regular basis and kind of be part of my inside world, right? Hence, Mass Marketing Master Insiders Club. And so um, I was looking at all the the tab, and I was looking at these master classes, and I, and I had never looked at them. I filmed one, I filmed one a month for the last like sixteen months, so I never really looked at them as like oh my, looked at them together in one list. And I was reading through the titles of the master class. I actually think I do have a money making bucket one on there, but I was looking at you know five ways to get your next ten clients, um, how to maximize your time, how to speak in public. And it was all these different, and these are like two hour masterclass type calls that I've done with my private group that as soon as you get inside the MMLC, you would get access to. Um, this is like, if you like this podcast today, take what I did today and then add the how, right? I didn't really tell you how to do it. I told you that these lists are available to you, but I don't have the time on a podcast to tell you exactly what you should do to extract money from each of these lists um and so so you get all those master classes with it and you get the the how to do it in addition to um the what to do the other thing you'll get is a print newsletter and we we're the only company that sends a physical print newsletter um to the homes of our clients that you know i'm sure there's others out there but uh, i just i just like getting stuff in the mail so I keep doing it. Um, so you, you'll get that. And you'll so you get one of those every month. And uh, you'll also get access to my director of marketing at Gabriel Fitness. So my director of marketing at Gabriel Fitness is also a marketing coach inside this program, inside the MMIC. So you can get on calls with my director of marketing and talk to him and ask questions about your marketing so he can help you. So you get coaching um, for that. Uh, in addition to you get access to a private Facebook group, you get a new monthly call with me. So every month I'm doing a new master class. So you get access and live, um, you get live access to the new master classes. So not only do you get the recorded ones, but you get the new ones as well. And um, you also get access to the private Facebook group where you can ask questions and then we're posting content inside the Facebook group and doing things like that. And I know this might sound like, oh, this is a lot, um, but actually you can um, get in this program for $1. And what I do is I do a, a trial membership, trial membership to the MMIC, and you can get access to everything I just said for two months for a buck. So you get 60 days to try the program out uh, for a dollar. You can cancel anytime you want. Um, and then after the dollar it goes to one nine seven a month, but before you get billed to one seven nine seven, you can cancel. There's there's really no risk other than losing a dollar. And I happen to believe we can make up a dollar's worth of stuff uh, in everything that I just explained. So if you want to join me and want to do um, a trial uh, of the uh, Marketing Master Insiders Club for gym owners, just go to club.vincegabriel.com. Club C L U B dot vincegabriel.com and that'll take you right there uh, you'll also get a copy of my new book uh, right when you sign up all this is for a dollar come on guys it's a buck um, so tons and tons and tons of assets and resources money making advice uh, for a lowly buck just go to club.vincegabriel.com and I will see you soon peace